reading 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and I may have said chapter 7 but it's chapter 6 and verse 1 and Paul writing about the ministry he's summing it all up and he said we then as workers together with him that's with Christ beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. And I have a message I preach sometimes on, on despising the grace of God and sins against the grace of God. And I'm thinking sometimes we take this grace that we're saved by for granted. But anyway, this grace has come down to us and brought salvation to mankind and this salvation has brought this grace has brought salvation into our heart if we're saved God's way we're saved by grace through faith and now he's going to talk about this grace in serving God now hold your place I'm getting some of these verses just along as the Lord would put them on my heart but look at this grace in serving him in Hebrews 12 and verse 28. Hold your place, 2 Corinthians 6. And in Hebrews 12, 28, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have yeah, yeah. grace. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming for and I'm trying to put upon our heart on this day what's involved in serving the what 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 what's taken uh, encompassing this this involvement in serving God that'll be kind of much my subject matter I'm just shooting that out here but anyway in verse 2 of 2 Corinthians 6 for he saith I have heard thee in a time accepted in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Amen. And then he said, giving no, no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastenings, and by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. So I'm stopping in our reading there and Paul's given us a summation of the ministry. Well, you say, I'm not a minister. Well, if you're saved, you've been called to serve. Amen. God has called us all into some capacity. And we've come in this house on this day to worship the Lord and to equip ourselves to go out and sufficiently serve God. And there's a world out there that's always at stake. Come, Tanya, people on every side of us and all of us have family and friends and if they don't get saved they're going to die in their sins and go to hell and by the way I'm just going to obey what the Lord's put on my heart Brother Simpson it was here you that met him on Wednesday night he left me a prayer request and it's been on my heart since he left it and I think we ought to, 
or to do what people ask to pray for me, man. And I've been trying to pray ever since. But he said, I've got a 95-year-old sister that lives in Knoxville, Tennessee, and she's never been saved. And I thought, boy, it's a long time to live. And I tell you, getting up in an age like that, and I say that God's people ought to be concerned for a lost world. We come in this church and the nice facility don't really need no work, just need people to come and occupy the pews and pray together and get ourselves equipped to go out to be a witness for the saving grace of our Lord Jesus. But I want to talk just for a few minutes this morning as the Lord lays it on my heart on this being involved in the work of God, the service of God. And I say first of all we see the the call I tell you, the, 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 the being chosen, the Lord of the harvest hath chosen us. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter number 9. And our Lord Jesus here in Matthew chapter 9. And he's going to talk to us about this, this serving God. But in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages and he's talking about in the Galilee area I must say teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people and when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad and as sheep having no shepherd and then saith he to his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the labors are few and here's a verse that's on my heart on this day and he said pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors in his harvest amen and I'm preaching on what's involved in serving the Lord amen what's involved in us working for the Lord amen I say thank God the Lord of the harvest that had chosen us. Amen. He's chosen us in John chapter 15, uh, right here on the pages of this King James Bible. I'm preaching from this morning. I'm going to try to keep my page together here. But John chapter 15, and our Lord talks about being chosen into the service. Amen. John chapter number 15, and I'll be there in just a moment in, in the Word of God. But the Lord said here in John 15 and 15, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. And he said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit that your fruit may should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask to my father in my name how he may give it th to you these things I command you that ye love one another amen and I say the Lord here is calling on every one of us that are saved by the grace of He ain't give nobody up for exemption on this going out and serving God. He said, I've chosen you. I've ordained you that you should go and bring for fruit and the world's looking at us on this day whether we realize it or not when we pulled out of our driveway where we came from on this day somebody's taking notice whether we're being faithful amen to God's house and faithful to serve the Lord amen I say the Lord of the harvest hath chosen us that are be enough to cause us to 
be involved in the work of the Lord. As our Lord looked upon the, the multitudes of his day and saw they were without a shepherd. Oh, I'm telling you, there's a world out there, I tell you, that needs, needs a word from us. Amen. As we give them a word from the Lord. Oh, I tell you, the world out there needs to see some real Christianity in this day, in a day of liberalism, in a day of pretension, in a day of hypocrisy. I tell you, in a day when you can't tell whether they're real or not, I'm telling you, God has called on us to be compassionate and be concerned about a world that is unsaved. Amen. I think about the Lord of glory that stepped down from the ivory palaces of glory and stepped in a body through the virgin birth and stepped up to an old rugged cross and died for the sins of mankind or to bring Adam's race Adam the federal head of the race that succumbed to temptation and sold us out and sold us on the slave market of sin and on the old rugged cross uh, uh, paid our penalty in full. Amen. That you and I could go free and be set free. But there's a world out there on this day, I tell you, bound in their sin and blinded by the God of this world, which is Satan. And all that God could bring them loose from the bondage of sin. It'll take more than what man can muster up. It'll take more than what we can do. I bet we can pray that the Lord of the harvest would send us, amen, as a labor in the vineyard of God, all that we might give them the light of the gospel on our little pamphlets we've been passing out on and putting on the doorknobs. I said from Morning Star Baptist Church, shining the light of the gospel of Christ to a world of sinners that are in sin. I'm saying on this day, the Lord of the harvest hath chosen us. Amen. And I'm saying on a second note on this day, not only has the Lord of the harvest chosen us, but the lost souls of men call us. Amen. Oh, when I look down at the 14 indictment upon Adam's race in Romans chapter 3, we're left that man's a lost sinner, lost to the Lord, and lost in his soul. Oh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I think it was John Bunyan uh, that Eddie wrote in his book. Uh, I, I tell you how that uh, from the bottom of man's feet uh, to the top of his head, uh, man is a depraved uh, sinner. Uh, I tell you, desperately wicked, uh, doomed and damned and deceived by the God of this world, which is Satan. And I say to get involved in the work of God, uh, the lost souls of men uh, are calling us. Amen. Uh, and the doors we've been knocking on of late and you see that door open and, and look at the faces of, of some of them a lot of them just young people and all oh, I'm telling a lot of them no doubt the earrings in their nose and in their ear, men I'm telling you older men I must say I'm telling you they're looking for something that the world don't have to give them but God's people are to be concerned about a world that is unsaved Amen. A lost generation that will go to hell if we don't reach them with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here we're all right on the 
the verge uh, in our in our closing service this morning uh, of launching out with our missionary work uh, and I, I'm thinking this is what the Lord uh, has really put upon my heart uh, I'm telling you I'm not trying to I'm trying to spend what money we've got but I'm telling you, we ought to spend it what we've got uh, and the time that we got to honor uh, the Lord Jesus uh, and try to reach that soul that's on the on the threshold of it eternity uh, and without God. Well I'm saying uh, not only the Lord of the harvest hath chosen us uh, and the lost souls of men call us uh, but I say third of all on this day uh, how the love of Christ uh, constraineth us. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15 and this will kind of go along with my last thought about the lost souls of men that call us and he said for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again I'm saying on this note this morning on a third note of getting involved in the work of God getting involved in spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. That church at Thessalonica, Paul had well taught them in the sport, sport, short space of time he was with them. And, it, and, and history says he taught them all the great fundamentals of the faith. And thank God putting into practice the doctrine that he taught them. All I tell you, they reach out to those that were unsaved. Amen. They had a work of faith and a labor of love and a patience of hope and their work of faith. They had turned to God from their idols and then their, their labor of love. They were serving God. Serving God. Not only had they turned to God from their idol, but to serve the true and living God and to wait for his son from heaven the Lord Jesus uh, whom he had raised from the dead uh, who had saved them from the wrath to come I'm saying that God has called on us to serve amen and if you're saved God's way he's put his love in your heart Romans 5 uh, his love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost uh, which he's given unto us amen how could God's people keep from serving and reaching out to those that are unsaved if God's put his love in your heart and he said the love of Christ constraineth that means it's urging us to go on amen it's calling on us to get involved amen give what you got amen give all that you got God don't want part of us he want all of us Amen. Uh, Romans 12, 1. And here Paul said, I beseech you, I persuade you, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your body uh, a living sacrifice unto God, uh, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, and God don't call on us to do the un reasonable. He just calls on us to make ourselves available. <laughs> Give ourselves hey man our total self, our talents, our treasure and everything that we got. God wants it all. I'm telling you and I'm afraid we're just got going along with the flow in these days. Going along to get along and not really concerned about a world that's unsaved. Oh it ought to cause our heart to how we Upon this day, and Jeremiah the great 
weeping prophet, prophet. Oh, I tell you, was concerned about Judah and Jerusalem. God had foreordained Jeremiah, a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 1, he said, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes were a fountain of tears that I might weep night and day for the slain of the daughter of my people. And I say the love of Christ is constraining us on this day. Amen. Because if one died for all then we're all dead oh I go over that a lot and I have to go over it a lot I'm I'm just afraid of the words getting out that I'm a Calvinist I'm not a Calvinist I'm not even a hyper Calvinist I believe that Christ died for every sinner I believe when he hung on Calvary's crawl he said every drop of his blood to save every sinner that will come God's way he's a Savior of all men. First Timothy 2 5 and 6 said, Well, there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus, who gave himself for a few. No, he didn't say that. Who gave himself for all to be testified in due time. And I'm saying the Lord of the harvest has chosen us and sent us out. And and I say on a second note on this day, I say, friend, that the lost souls of men call us, and the love of Christ constraineth us. But I'm saying, taking it another note further on this day, the loss of rewards challenges. Amen. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 right on the pages of this King James Bible and he's writing in view of the judgment seat of God and we're headed I'm t- we're in this house is saved and we, 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 we talk a lot about the Lord coming I wish he'd come today but I'm not sure we're ready for the judgment seat of God and that's God's people are going to be judged as to our service and he writes about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11 for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone wood, hay or stubble every man's work shall be made Manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And if any man's work abide which is built thereon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Did you hear what I read? He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so by as by far. And I I say we ought to be involved this day. Uh, I'm telling you, as saved by God's grace uh, and kept by His mighty power, uh, and God's give us breath to breathe uh, and give us an able body, uh, and God's constrained us to get involved in the work of God. Uh, but I'm telling you, here's the challenge on this day. Uh, I say the lack of time uh, compels us, uh, but the loss of rewards uh, challenges challenges us and I'm afraid uh, I tell you what we've done in the flesh uh, I know for sure there won't get, be no reward for that our motive's been wrong a lot of times uh, but oh if we come to God's house uh, and pray for sinners uh, and go out and try to witness to them uh, in the energy of the Holy Ghost of God uh, and plead for their soul amen oh if they ever get saved uh, they'll be our rejoicing when we get to glory. That's what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19. What is our joy or crown of joy? And he said, are you not even in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? Oh, there'll be a rejoicing when we get to glory Amen. and have to see those that we, I tell you, that we've labored for and given Amen. and getting the gospel to where they could 
be saved. Amen. I'm saying on this day, the loss of rewards challenges us. And I'm almost through the lack of time. It calls on us. I'm telling you, this day, I have never seen so much time running by us. I tell you, in, in Romans chapter number 13, look what Paul wrote under inspiration of the Holy Ghost about this 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 time and he said in Romans 13 11 and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation near than when we believe the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light Oh, he's calling on us to be aware of the short time we've got uh, knowing the time that it's above time it's high time that we wake out uh, of sleep or uh, oh, to aware of the short time uh, and awaiting the salvation you see we've got a redeemed body uh, and a uh, redeemed soul uh, and I tell you waiting on a redeemed body and we'll get that at the appearance of Christ. Yeah. We'll be ultimately saved. But I'm telling you, our time's running out uh, to do what we can do. Uh, all he said in this word of God, uh, the lack of time compels us. Uh, or knowing the time. Wait, it's time uh, we the children of the light uh, it's time that we got up and, and got about the business of God uh, yeah. amen uh, I tell you waving the blood stained banner of our Lord Jesus Christ and so I preached a little bit a little bit right from my heart on this day uh, what's involved in the work of God amen the Lord of the harvest hath chosen uh, and and sinners and the lost souls of men call us and all the love of Christ constrains us the loss of rewards challenges us and the lack of time compels us all I say on this day with the text I read on this day he said as workers together with him he said I'm beseeching I'm persuading I'm begging you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain and God's give us this good age of grace or oh, where man say by grace plus nothing and minus nothing and we ought to not waste the days that God hath given us amen I tell you, we ought to try to be reaching out. Amen. I tell you, looking for somebody we can tell about yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hey, somebody out there needs Jesus. Yeah. And on every side where we go. Amen. And I pray that the Lord of harvest, uh, all that he'll work with my heart. Amen. All that God will put a bigger burden in my heart yeah. for those that are unsaved. Think, and I'm closing. Think about Paul, the great apostle. Uh, and God had raised him up to go far hence to the Gentiles. Oh, in this age of grace, God's plan and purpose is a calling out among the Gentiles of people for his name. But Paul still had that burden for the Jew. And that's what we're fixing to do here in the closing service. We're fixing to take on a missionary to Nazareth, to the Arabs, I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, God puts that on my heart and Judy had brought that up several weeks back and we've been praying and got got it connected up with a missionary and that's what we're going to do in the closing service on this day we're going to call this church into order and get affirmative to take this missionary on a missionary to the people of Israel amen oh I tell you that just rejoices my heart I'm telling you we're not just stuck on the Jew but we're stuck on the Gentile the salvation to the Jew and the Gentile yeah. God who shows no partiality in Romans amen man the gospel of God taking in the gospel to the Jew as well as the Gentile well that's what the Lord's put on my